you go. All right. All Thanks, right, Pastor guys. Jay. You're welcome. Yeah. Right on. Let's, uh, while we're in the clapping mood, let's, let's give the fathers in the room a hand. Yeah. And it's, it's really, it's on God's top 10 to honor fathers, to honor our parents. So, yeah, in that spirit, let's give these fathers another hand. And let's give our heavenly father a hand. Hallelujah. Praise, praise his name. So about fathers, and before I continue, um, I want to say a couple of things. There are a variety of fathers and types um, of fathers. There's biological, there's stepfathers, adoptive, hanai, as they say in Hawaii, uh, right, uh, Olohe Kalani. Um, there's father figures, and there's fathers to be. There may be young men in here that'll become fathers one day, and, and, uh, and that's awesome, right? And then there's others that fill that role out of necessity. So for the purpose of this sermon, when I say fathers, that applies to you. If you're in any of those categories, so let's just make that real clear before we get rolling here. So I'm going to pray right now for the fathers in this room and the ones that are online listening. Father God, I just want to ask you that you would give a special blessing for the fathers in this place, in Huntington Beach Church, in the garage in this area, in this place, online, within earshot, that they be growing and growing and growing in the knowledge and the grace of God, and that they would desire to let the compassion of God flow through them, that they would be moved deep because of obedience to you and leading by your spirit to fill that sacred role to the very best of their ability. In Jesus' name, amen. So as we talk about fatherhood on Father's Day, we're really talking about a sacred stewardship role and a relationship that's sacred. Let's make no mistake about that. The Lord is deadly serious about his lambs and his sheep. John 21, 15 through 19 talks about this. And often it's in the context of Peter being restored to ministry. But in that section of scripture, and I'll give it to you, those that are writing notes, it's in John 21, 15 through 19. This is how we lead. We lead by following Jesus Christ. He said, follow me after he talked about how serious he is and emphasizing that we're to feed and tend, that Peter's to feed and tend his lambs. It's not just feeding, and we work hard. We want to drag home the kill as dads. That's good, but we have to tend them. And the ultimate is being led by Christ and leading them to Christ, teaching them the word of God and living that, being that living epistle being that vessel of honor that glorifies the Lord and not us, right? May we not glory in God's presence. We want to glorify him. Amen. So that's what happens when we follow Jesus. We let him take the lead. We let the Lord show us what a real father is, what a righteous father is, a holy father. It's in his righteousness. It's in his holiness. So about my father, he was a man of few words, World War II vet, decorated veteran, 1968 Orange County Father of the Year. A lot of people respected him. And um, he's been with the Lord for 29 years, so it's been quite a while. So if you're in this room and you've lost a father, 
I can have compassion on you and I know I can empathize with you. It's difficult. But the Lord is so good. His goodness outweighs everything. It overshadows everything. He's enough. He is more than enough. He makes us abundant. So he would have been 103 years old this May. So there's quite a gap. He was quite um, advanced in age when he had me. I was the youngest, and I am the youngest of 15. Yeah, 15 children. They had, by, the, by faith in God, they had 15 children. I think there was a TV show back in the 70s and 80s, eight is enough. Well, to my parents, to my father, eight was not enough because he wanted 100% of what God had for him. And if it was an abundance, then he wanted that abundance. And that's the faith of my father. And may that um, increasingly be your heart. Maybe not 15 kids, but really just wanting the Lord and not to stop to just be abundant in our life. Because when he, in, when he flows into us, then we flow out. And the idea is, is that we want to really focus today on God's compassion and letting the compassion of God flow through you. Right? When we flow through, when we are a conduit, when we're a vessel of honor, then we bring honor to him. And we f- reflect him properly. And he is glorified. And as we'll read in later on as we uh, get through the sermon, and I'll, and I'll make it quick, um, it really is going to have impact across generations. It's really that big of a deal. It really is. So my dad was Pastor Rott's favorite uncle. And it's probably because Pastor Rott sensed the compassion of God flowing through him in a pretty radical and authentic way. Um, And my dad was deadly serious about his children, protecting them, tending them, feeding them, just like what Jesus said in John 21, 15 through 19. He took that very seriously. And... It was really, his heart was between him and the Lord. He really didn't care what anybody else thought. And that's a true leader. When we really can just put that aside and have the resolve and that type of commitment that is greater than laws and all these low bars that we have, social norms, societal norms, and it's a higher standard, and it's the Lord's standard. So may we do that. May we desire to do that. So my father had moments. He was a human. And he had moments of anger and other faults, like we all do, right? I'm not here to idolize my father. I'm here to honor him. I'm here to honor the heavenly father, my heavenly father, your heavenly father. But his authentic faith in God gave him a tenderness and compassion that came from a steady joy of the Lord. A strength, confidence, and freedom found in Jesus Christ, the resurrected Christ, the power of God. That's what makes us solid when we're anchored. The top three priorities of life. That's one of the main things he taught me, among many, many things. Later we can talk about it if you, if we, you know, if you like. But you can ask my kids and they'll tell you what those top three priorities of life are because I pass that on to those kids. And his heart of compassion for his 15 kids didn't stop there. And what flowed from his heart was a whole lot larger than him because God provides abundantly. When you have a need, when we have needs, God provides. It even says that he reigns on the just and the unjust. He might be blessing people that aren't even his kids because that's the kind of father that he is. He's awesome. He really is awesome. And I think we need to be careful not to misunderstand who God is 
And that's why we're going to run through some things today. We can realign, reset, get anchored back to the truth of what it, the Bible says about our Father. It was a really interesting thing growing up in the house that I grew up in, in Garden Grove, just down the street here in the Carrasco house. He came back from World War II, built that house in 1947, raised 15 kids in that house, and many, many other kids were taken care of in that house. If any of the neighborhood kids happened to be uh, ringing on the doorbell or knocking on the door or just walking in the door, which we never locked, they were, and we were eating and we were busy doing something like that, they were eating with us. You sat down, you pulled up a chair, you are having a meal with us. And there was always room for more. And in Christ, there's always room for more. We can go on mission trips, like the one that I went on in November and December last year. In fact, I have a video. I might have JJ queue it up real fast before we continue. And it's a quick few, a few minutes that recaps what happened on that trip. And what happened on that trip came from a place of abundance. Ironically, I was out of a job during that trip. I didn't know how God was going to provide on that trip or even if I'd be able to go. But I believe by faith that he was calling me and that he would provide and he provided. So let's give the Lord a hand and let's roll that video, JJ.
discipleship, missions, King's Christian Fellowship and Missions. Yeah, hallelujah. That is a quick snapshot of what went down last winter. And they want us to come back, and we're going back. I'm going to be going there from June 29 through July 10. So I really appreciate your prayers. And there's also talk about another one coming up after that um, in Japan and in some other places. So what's going on here in the garage next door has led to some things, like uh, Pastor Rot asking to bring back Jiu-Jitsu for Jesus. And then Jiu-Jitsu for Jesus being heard about by other people, like those guys from the UFC, and inviting us to this mission trip, and then just snowballing and snowballing. It's just the abundance of the Lord. And that type of thing is what God is doing. And it's increasing and increasing. So please keep praying and um, be rejoicing, because there's fruit being added to many accounts because of all that. So this is what happens when that abundance is flowing, when we're flowing, letting the compassion of God flow through us. These are the kinds of things and greater things that are possible and that are yet to happen. Um, So, yeah, so growing up in that house, there was a Catholic church across the street. When they would close at 5 p.m., they would turn people away that needed help and take a wild guess where they sent them. They sent them to the Carrasco house. They said, go there. They'll feed you. They'll clothe you. They'll give you water. They might even let you stay there. And all those things and more would happen. And one of those orphans that came to, that pl- came to our doorstep ended up bringing my brother Rocky to Christ, who led me to Christ when I was six. And he led Rot's father to Christ, my Uncle Chuck, who led him to Christ. So radical things happen when we have that kind of abundance in our home by being that father that allows the compassion of God to flow through him. So I'm really just begging you, let the compassion of God flow through you. Right? Because before we come to Christ, we have issues. And and regarding my compassion, my walk with the Lord is early and often repentance. You can ask my wife and kids. <laughs> I'm so thankful for, what, for who he is and what he did for me. The seriousness that he's given me for his lambs and his sheep. He's done that for me. My daily prayer is that I might offer myself a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to him. Because without the holiness and acceptable of the Lord, acceptability of, of the Lord which is only found in Christ. He's our righteousness, right? But we're not a vessel of honor. We can't be that vessel of honor. So don't do it without Christ. Don't try to do this without the Lord. We need help. Later on in Psalm 103, we'll talk about that. God remembers that we're dust. He knows our frame. He has compassion on us. He knows we need a lot of help. Each of us needs so much help. And we have that help in the Lord. So before I came to Christ, there was wrath involved, right? Anger and wrath. And I see it kind of that, uh, that sanctification process going from that anger and that wrath and moving toward compassion, right? It might be a little different in your life and in your heart. But James 1.20 says, The wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. We can get angry. We can exhibit wrath. But if it's man's wrath, that's not a good thing. The Lord wants to change you today. God's righteous wrath is completely different from that. And it was poured out on Jesus Christ on the cross. He made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. 
He treats us like we live Jesus' sinless life when we put our faith in him and when he saves us. And he treated Jesus like he lived all of our sinful lives. He made him to be sin for us. That was the full wrath of God poured out on him. And that's what it says in 2 Corinthians 521. And if you come with us on Tuesday nights, that's what we say every time before the service. The heart of the gospel is really focused on the compassion of God. So you could boil it down to that word if you really wanted to, if that's the kind of note taker you are. So I celebrate my wife. I love Minnie. We've been married for 26 years. My closest and most intimate disciples are Garrison and Malia, my children right here. And as far as my ministry goes, I got to get that right. I really do have to get that right. Because you are the most precious things in my life on this earth. And this is a sacred stewardship and responsibility and an honor and a privilege to be a father. So what fuels my ministry? What gets me up in the morning? What keeps me going when the chips are down and when things get really tough, which they get really tough? I'm a bivocational pastor. I serve with Pastor Sammy and Pastor Chris as one of the pastors in the garage, which means among the three of us, we do the work of a senior pastor, which is a lot of work. It's heavy stuff, but the Lord is enough. He does it, and he flows his compassion through us, and he lets us get the job done right. May, it always, may we always be that, that faithful steward and overseer of his flock, which he purchased with his blood in Jesus' name. Jiu-Jitsu for Jesus its just another avenue. It's just another way to let that flow. We trained up black belts. We've got students in this room. We have my seniors in this room. These are the things that we do. Paul says in the epistles, you ought to be teachers by now. And as a father, you're training disciple makers, hopefully, prayerfully, teachers, right? To teach and help others. And on my next mission trip and from July 29, or June 29 to July 10, the number one thing in my mind is going to be to let the compassion of God flow through me wherever I am on that trip, wherever I tread my foot. In Jesus' name, may that happen. So if you're going to be praying for me, pray for that thing right there, that the compassion of God would be flowing through me on that mission trip. So regarding you, application, you've been given the ministry of reconciliation. Every single one of you in this room has a ministry. It's reconciliation. And it's rooted in compassion. 2 Corinthians 5.18 talks about that. Fathers, let the compassion of God flow through you to your children and your disciples your spiritual kids. 1 Corinthians 4.15 talks about that one. Read it and do it, and you'll grow in compassion. That's what Pastor Rott used to say. Read it and do it. What happens when you read it and do it? You become more like the God you worship, and he's a compassionate father. Yeah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The best feeding and tending is the father's feeding and tending. You want to be the best father? You study the word of God and the heavenly father. There's your template. There's the plan. There's the power. There's the authority. There's the anointing. There's everything you need for righteousness and godliness. 
So I'm going to read some of those things. I'm going to go through some mountaintops in Psalm 103. And as we finish up here, in conclusion, we're going to look at some of these things. Now, before we go in Psalm 103, starting in 1, I want to show you the priority of recognizing who God is. Verse 1, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me, bless his holy name. That's the top priority. He is God above, and he's worthy of all of our praise. And we're dust. We're in verse 14. We're dust. But he's given us breath and life, right? He's quickened us. He's made us alive, and we worship him, and we honor him. That's the priority. Verse 2, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Don't forget the benefits of the Lord. Don't forget, don't forget who he is. Remember those things. Be thankful for those things. Because that thankfulness of who he is and what he's done for us strengthens us and fills us with that joy of the Lord. Stay in the word. Review the word of God. Take notes. Review your notes. As you pray, pray through these things. You do that and the compassion of God will flow through you more and more. So I'm going to hit some high points. He forgives, forgives all our iniquities. Not some, all. Heals. He's our healer. Redeems us from destruction. He paid the price so we're not destroyed. Crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies. Hallelujah. Satisfies our mouth with good things. Renews your youth like an eagle. Every year, eagles get a brand new set of feathers. And it's almost impossible unless you're one of those experts. You can't tell a young eagle from an old one because they get a new set of feathers. That's what God does. He can do that for you. Executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. That's the God we serve. If you're oppressed, you have an advocate. Made known his ways to Moses, acts to the children of Israel. He's a knowable God. He wants us to know him. Merciful and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in mercy. Fathers, let's let the compassion of the Lord flow through us so we can be more like this. More moments out of the day and more days out of the year in Jesus' name. He'll not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever, not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his mercy towards those who fear him. We need mercy. We need his mercy. And we need mercy as sons and as fathers. As far as the east is from the west, he's removed our transgressions from us. Transgressions. Not just sins, but willful disobedience. Knowing it's wrong and doing it anyways. And he's removed that as far as the east is from the west. And as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. We need compassion. We really do. Verse 14, he remembers that we're dust. He remembers that we're dust. We need help. We require lots of compassion. But where there's a need, God provides. He is so good to us. He loves you so much. He really, really loves you so much. Please know that. He's a knowable God. It's impossible to measure his love for us. Paul talks about it in the, in the epistle in the New Testament. His height and depth and length and breadth. 
How can we constrain him? How can we put him in this building or in a box? You're the church. He's living in you. He's so good, and he loves you so much. Let the compassion of God flow through you today, fathers. I want to pray in finishing up here for the fathers in the room out of Psalm 103. Heavenly Father, God, we want to bless the name of the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that's within me. We want to bless your holy name. We don't want to forget all your benefits. Lord, your Bible is filled with your benefits. Give us a hunger and a thirst for righteousness, a hunger and a thirst for your word, because the stakes are high. Our leadership and stewardship affects generations, fathers. It says in verse 17 and 18, the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him, and his commandments to children's children to such, who keep, such as keep his covenant and those who remember his commandments and do them. So, Lord, would you help us to read it and do it, and that the fathers of Huntington Beach Church would desire to let the compassion of God flow through them. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, happy Father's Day, everybody. Thanks for having me, Pastor Jay. Happy Father's Day to you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Yes, for Pastor Randy. You know, when Pastor Rot was uh, here with us, he's in heaven now, and uh, we can't wait to join him there. Um, not that I'm in a hurry, but uh, he he told me back then. He said, "Man, you got to meet my cousin and uh, Randy." And uh, did he call you cousin or nephew? So I'm like, y'all all call each other cousins. I can't keep up with it. yeah. And uh, he said, this guy's phenomenal. He loves the Lord. He loves people. And I do believe that uh, Pastor Randy is the most compassionate pastor on our staff. Amen. And uh, he's, he's gentle natured, soft-spoken, authentic, real. He cares. He cares so much. And um, so he's, a, he's such a blessing. Uh, to serve with. And I tell you to all the men that are in the room, man, because I know what it's like out here. It's hard to find good friends. It's hard to be around good guys that are going to lift you up and build you up. If you're looking for such friends, come on over to the Garage Church, hang out with Pastor Randy and the guys, hang out with Pastor Joe and these guys. And I'm telling you, you're going to find what you're looking for. They're not only going to be your friends, they're going to introduce you to the one who is closer than a friend, Jesus Christ. Amen? All right. Praise the Lord. Well, we're about to wrap up our service this morning. I know y'all probably got some lunch plans, things like that. But we got a, we got a special thing we're going to do. I'm going to ask Will to come up here, and uh, we're going to do this. And then at the end, by the way, for those who uh, maybe have been thinking about it all service, if you'd like to come up, guys, all of you, uh, fathers, spiritual fathers, if you want to come up and uh, sign this resolution uh, to be a man of resolve, uh, Joe, you're going to take this and put a, uh, what you're going to put a poxy over? All right, you're going to pour a poxy over. So won't, you won't be able to sign it after that. So you better get your name on there now. And then I told these guys, go hang it over there in the garage church. And uh, that'll be a cool thing hanging on the wall over there to remind us of this day these men took a public stand for the Lord. So make sure you get your name on it. And uh, come talk to Joe to get more information about the men's ministry. All right, with that said, you know, normally we give out little trinkets and stuff, um, Mother's Day, Father's Day, stuff like that. But Will's got a great idea, so I'm going to turn the mic over to Will and let him tell us what he's going to do. All right, man. We